Hello everyone and welcome back to my Galileo 6.4x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we begin by trying to recover a payload from space. We haven't gotten to orbit yet, but last time we tried this particular rocket, the DB-1B, and tried to launch goo into space and then recover it. And again, I'm trying to do 100% recovery, so this, this whole rocket was meant to be recovered intact, but the problem was it flipped around, went uh, probe side first, and plunged into the ground at very high velocity, and was unable to release its parachutes. So in order to ensure that our probe is going to come back down in the correct direction, I've put little fins on the payload there, and those will be covered up in a payload shroud so that they don't affect the airflow while we go up, so it won't flip on the way up. But it will help it point in the correct direction on the way down. Well, we do have fins on the bottom as well, so what it'll do is it'll sort of have the probe go sideways more than anything else and that'll be good for drag as well and it won't be a problem at least that's what i was thinking and a lot of this is going to be experimentation trying to see what we can get away with around gale this planet that has been rescaled to 6.4x and a lot of the systems i'm going to be trying are sort of marginal in my mind in other words i don't know if they're going to work if i knew it was going to work it'd be no fun so there will be a lot of times in this series when you're going to see me do something and go, well, this other option will be a lot easier. And yeah, for instance, in the previous episode, we were trying out an airship in order to do an aerial survey of a particular location. Well, launching a rocket over there would have been much easier. Um, at least I've done that before many times in Stock Kerbal, so I, I have more confidence doing that than trying to bring an airship over there. The purpose of trying out the airship was because I hadn't done it before. So uh, similarly here, uh, this, this sort of uh, dual fin solution to the problem isn't something that I've done, at least nothing I've done successfully before, let me put it that way. Uh, it's possible that I tried at one point to do boosters like this, but they definitely did not work. So let's see what's gonna happen here. Heading back down through 40 kilometers, I was on uh, physical time warp there. We're going through the plasma blackout, no communications, and it's not looking good. It's going head first again, the wrong way around. But it is tilting away from prograde, you'll note. It is definitely tilting from prograde, and here it starts to flatten out, which is good for drag. And basically what I thought would happen, happened, more or less. Anyway, we got the parachutes out is the important part. Though the landing was admittedly not as good as I would have liked because the Vanguard, it can't balance on the Vanguard engine and it tipped over so we lost a couple of fins. But we were able to recover the rest and so overall a successful attempt at suborbital flight with a goo container and we move on to orbital flight. The historical progression contract for that of course is Sputnik 1 and it specifies unmanned. So we can't put a Kerbal in. That might actually be a little bit easier because our probe core isn't particularly great right now and the Kerbal would control it better. I noted that the contract uh, rewards were quite high, so I tuned down the science and fund rewards again, uh, trying to keep things a little bit more sensible, but I, I, I'm worried that it's not actually picking up on this. We'll have to see. That's it, as I unlock stability and recovery stuff using the science that I gained from the previous mission, it does occur to me looking at the tech tree that we have got the KSP interstellar stuff which is wildly more expensive than the normal parts that you get in stock, so perhaps having rich fun rewards is not unreasonable. Anyway, we move on to orbital rockets. I made a couple of designs prior to this DB-5, but those I didn't fly yet. Uh, those will be for other purposes. But here, I needed to work out how to control this thing. And this probably doesn't have enough to get to orbit just yet, but we don't have any fins that have control surfaces. What we do have is some airplane parts from Fire Spitter. That have control surfaces and so that's what I'm putting on here. Those are actually I think horizontal stabilizers or vertical stabilizers from uh, warplanes basically. Uh, World War II era warplanes and so I'm tucking them in. We've got a SRB at the bottom that we want to recover right. We've got a parachute on there. We've got the vanguard stage and then the upper stage with the rear guard 
And the question is, well, we definitely don't have enough delta V for orbit, though it's really close, 7,400. Orbital velocity is about 6,100, so this is basically falling just short. But, and if, if, if we really got the trajectory perfect and got it going in the right direction, then it might actually make orbit. But the thing is, actually having it go in the right direction, we don't have SAS. And the SRB doesn't, yeah, well, I think the procedural SRBs have a quarter degree gimbling, not much, not enough. And the Vanguard engine has the little vernier thrusters, but they're not great. So controllability is rough. And I'm, I'm looking intently at the reaction wheel there, wondering if I should put it on. So, so far what we've been doing is going straight up from launch complex into space, and that's been relatively easy. Um, the whole going horizontal thing it, it's not so hard in KSP by default, but when you're dealing with trying to launch to 6,100 meters per second orbital velocity or so, that's, that's a little bit trickier because you're carrying a lot more mass up. Now I forgot to mention, here I put four little radial engines on. I think they're the only radial engines we have, but the, the name slips my mind at this point. They're actually slightly more efficient than the Vanguard engine at the center, but that's more powerful. And uh, the reason for that is readily apparent. We are losing velocity. We needed more thrust to weight ratio on this stage, so the radial engine seemed like the way to go. But yeah, you can see it's a struggle trying to keep the pitch up because if you're going so slow, the atmosphere is trying to force you down and gravity losses and all of that. So this is not good. This is not good on this stage. Um, fortunately, we do have the, the fins that are allowing us to deviate from prograde without flipping, so we have a lot of control on that score. What we don't have is SAS, so you can see it sort of rotating around because I'm trying my best to keep it close to prograde, but it's difficult without some sort of stability control here. Speaking of lack of stability control, uh, here we have the final stage, which does have gimbling, but you can see uh, it, it's tough to keep it pointed in the right direction without without SAS, honestly. Uh, the probodilbidine don't stay put in it, just doesn't cut it for me. Whereas, of course, we're much too shallow at this point, and I'm trying to pitch it up, but there's no avoiding the fact that at these velocities we should, we should be much higher up than we are right now. We're at serious risk of burning up, and of course, orbit is just not happening. But I'm trying my best here, trying to get some time to apoapsis. This this is a relatively long burning stage. At least we do manage to get to space, as you can see from our apoapsis, and as our engine runs out there, a pretty decent velocity, 3,900 meters per second, which gives me an idea about how far short we are. One thing hampering me at this point is uh, we're carrying the goo container, right? Uh, which is extra payload that we don't strictly have to carry in order to fill the Sputnik contract. And uh, perhaps uh, one thing that will eventually happen if I, if I don't figure out a way of doing this without dumping that goo container is that we'll just lighten the load. But anyway, we can do some science while here. And otherwise, we can watch the fireworks on the way down. Actually, not much by way of fireworks. Everything explodes immediately. And then we're left with the Probodobodyne Don't Stay Putnik, which on in the previous episode, I noted, didn't seem ha to have much drag. And uh, here, it's maxed out on temperature, but it isn't exploding. So uh, the properties of this particular probe core are impressive are impressive as uh, well it's certainly not going to survive impact with the ground but it's it's trying its best that's for sure it's actually not going very fast here 80 meters per second so I guess it must have some drag because it managed to slow down there but yeah impact with the water did not survive now while that probe didn't survive, we did recover through stage recovery, the booster stage and the vanguard stage. You can see it's got two parachutes on there for recovery and it did get recovered. So we are doing pretty well on the whole recovery thing. Um, whether the reuse of that is legitimate or not, that's a little bit more dicey, but uh, we are trying. 
and uh, the upper stage, the rear guard stage, actually remains attached to the probe. So we would have left it in state uh, in space as a single payload, and then maybe on a subsequent shuttle flight, sort of recovered it. Here I'm contemplating uh, spinning the upper stage up because it was wobbling around so much. I haven't had to do spin stabilization in anything except for realism overhaul before, so this is a novel experience, but uh, I think I ultimately decide not to go with that because, as you saw there, we're getting over our part count limit. So that's a little bit complicated. 30 parts is really not much to go with when you need so much Delta V to get to orbit, and we'll need to upgrade both the launch pad and the VAB before long in order to get anything serious done. But you see, I, I take those off, and we're going to have to use the fins to spin stabilize. So that means that the rocket is going to be spinning right off the bat which also means that I'm not going to be able to control it because while it's rolling very quickly or quickly enough to spin stabilize, it's very hard to manage pitch with it, as we'll soon see. As far as controlling heading, what you can do is, of course, as I did, pitch it a little bit in the direction you want to go in, but it ended up not going in that direction for some reason. And also, uh, the pitch deviation was a little bit much, so we are going shallow here after we uh, separate the booster. We are not going very fast, of course, in this stage, and you can see we're, we are already at around 45 degrees and descending in pitch, so this is not good at all, and this is not getting, in, getting to space at all. There's not much I can really do here. I try to ditch the Vanguard stage. If we get out of physics range from it, it could potentially save itself, but it, it doesn't, I don't think. Uh, here, the rear guard, I'm just trying to get away from the, from the Vanguard stage so that stage recovery will recover it, but really, by the time we get out of physics range, it's gonna collide with the ground anyway. So, this probably goes without saying is not going to be able to get to space or anything like it. So to recap, what we really need is to toss it up higher before the Vanguard engine starts out, one thing. And also if we have a lot of extra thrust, that would be good to make sure that uh, we don't pitch over quite as quickly. The more thrust you have, the less pitch over you get. And so that can manage it. And so I add another booster. And uh, so two boosters, two SRBs here. And we will see how this works. The good thing about the procedural SRBs is that you can basically uh, shape their thrust and duration however you like, whatever is necessary. And so that's very convenient compared to using other engines. The downside, of course, is the lower ISP. I forget if in order to compensate for the extra parts, I actually uh, paid for the VAB upgrade. Or it looks like the upper stage might have one less tank and uh, potentially one less part on it. Uh, maybe an antenna. Maybe I only had one antenna instead of two or something like that. It's possible that this is still a 30 part rocket. Well, it's not really doing so well, is it? No, it's safe to say that this is not going to work out for us either. The good thing about having extra funds is that you do have the freedom to mess around a bit and this was a messy option and it is sort of reminiscent of uh, of sounding rockets of days gone by in the early days of space flight yeah I think I think many people launch rockets just like that the problem of course is with the additional boosters my center of lift in relation to the center of mass changed. The center of mass got pulled down, but the center of the lift was in the same place. I moved the fins down below, but then we have a bit of a problem, right? Because uh, once that booster separates, there is no spin stabilization. But we'll just have to see how that works out for us. Here we go again. And, well, it's spinning properly. Off to a good start, I'd say. The first booster runs out just before we reach the speed of sound, but I decided to coast a bit before letting go and igniting the next booster. 
and that's just to increase the amount of time that we have the fins because the fins are producing the spin stabilization and and we want to keep the fins throughout the the time that the rocket is in the thicker part of the atmosphere once it's outside of the atmosphere the spinning will just continue and it'll keep spin stabilized just like that and here we are with the end of the second booster, second SRB, and on to the Vanguard stage. And this starts out alright, but then we're still in the atmosphere, and so it slows down to spinning and goes out of control. Now I removed the little radial engines that were providing extra TWR on this one, and that was because I took out one of the tanks, so that's one thing I did to reduce the part count to allow for the addition of the extra booster was to take off a tank from this stage and because I took off the extra mass from the stage I didn't need the extra thrust I thought. Um, now we still have the ability to control this using the verniers on the Vanguard so that's what I'm doing. I turned on the RCS because that's what you have to do to activate the verniers on it and so we do have control uh, but we lost a bit of Delta V spinning there. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, very important that we lost some delta V there. We're also um, not exactly pointed in the right direction. We're pointed south, so we're going for a polar orbit now instead of your normal sort of trajectory. And that's diminishing our chances of making orbit. So here's the end of the second stage. Still having trouble controlling its steering errors all over the place. And here we go with the rear guard stage. And this is a long stage, right? So the time to apoapsis is a little bit low, and we have to keep our pitch up in order to make sure that this stage has enough time. Um, the fact that we are not spin stabilized anymore means that um, it's it's sort of wobbly and tough to control. No SAS still. Ultimately, this is how we are at the end of the burn. And you can see 5,000 meters per second, so we're getting closer. And we would have been much better off if we were headed east and also uh, didn't have those steering losses, but 5,300 meters per second. So I think I'll leave the whole actually getting to orbit thing for the next episode. You can tune in to see how I finally do that. There's also a matter of sending Kerbals into space uh, that I haven't broached yet. And also, I think there was an airplane involved somewhere. Uh, somewhere in the broadcast. So I did make my first aircraft. So tune in for that in the following episodes and I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.